My name is David Coyote. My name is Jesus Canon. And our question is how do roller coasters uh, manage not to fall when they do a full loop? Okay, so most roller coasters loops, they're crossway shaped uh, loops, meaning those are tear shaped. Uh, they look tear shaped? They're, they're, okay, let me tell you. Uh, they're, they are based like a tear drop, which is, means that the radius is uh, larger at the bottom than it is at the top. And that helps us out with our um, question because. Our question deals with kinetic energy and potential energy. Kinetic energy is uh, energy through movement, and potential energy is stored energy. Now, how that works out with our question is that kinetic, or uh, there's usually a hill before a loop, and so kinetic energy is there's going to be energy coming from the loop when the roller coaster goes down. It's going to be collecting energy through the motion. Then, when it goes up, it's going to be the, the stored energy from the kinetic energy. You're gonna start now spending or it's gonna start um, using up, getting used up. And then once you're at the top and it starts going down, that's when kinetic energy starts coming because that's motion once again. And then you go through the loop. Now, the two formulas for kinetic energy and potential are uh, KE, 0 0.5 mass, velocity squared, and potential energy, which is mass, times the gravitational force, times the height. So, first we're gonna solve for the potential energy which is mass, force of gravity, and height. We got the mass when we searched up uh, the mass of a normal roller coaster car, which is 535. We got the force of gravity when we looked it up, which was uh, 9.8. And the height we got from the colossal loop, which is 38.5. After we did all the math, we got the potential energy was 203,166 joules. So now we're going to try to find the kinetic energy, which first we have to find the velocity because we don't know. <clears throat> so we take the potential energy, which was 203,166, and we're plugging into this new formula, which is one, and, one half two mass velocity squared. So first we get the roller coaster mass, and we divide it by two, which will give us 267.5. Then we divide that by the potential, um, we divide the potential energy by this, which will give us 759.5. Now we square that to get the velocity, which will give us at the end 27.5. Now we can find the kinetic energy. Cut it. We found the velocity, which is um, 27.5. We can find the kinetic energy now. So the formula for kinetic energy is 0 0.5 mass velocity squared. So 0 0.5 times uh, 535 times parentheses uh, 27.5 squared, which will give the kinetic energy, which will be 203,580. Okay, so after we found the kinetic energy, now we can figure out if it will go throughout the loop without falling or going back down. Because the kinetic energy always has to be greater than the potential energy, which we found was 203,566. So in this case, it will go all the way around. But if the kinetic energy was lower than the potential energy, it would just go straight down. Even if it's the same number, it will go around. Okay. Okay, so then we got 253,168. And so that's our potential energy now. To get our kinetic energy, we must uh, put that, we must, uh, it must be uh, less than the kinetic energy. And that will be 0 0.5 times 601 velocity squared, since we don't know velocity yet. And so we solve for that, and so we multiply these two, and we get 335.5 uh, velocity squared is greater than 253,168. We divide that on both sides, and we get 754.6 is less than velocity squared. And so we square root both of those sides, and the velocity is 27.47. And so once we got the velocity, we can solve for the kinetic energy. We plug in um, B, which is 0.5 times 671 times 27.47 squared. And our answer was 253,168.6, greater than 253,000 um, point, or 168. Um, at least it's still greater than the potential energy, which means that the roller coaster cart will still go over the loop and it won't just fall back down.